Yep, take three started without me on screen. Oh, it's just like I'm streaming again. Yay. Um, Caitlin Dowdy. Ha, I could remember her name. But it's mirrored for you because I'm using my phone camera because I'm not, uh, I don't have a web camera connected to my computer anymore because my computer, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm not, it makes it too, tempta too tempting to stream and do other things. Um, so I don't have a camera connected to my computer anymore. I only use my phone camera. Um, oh, part of it's because I don't want telehealth people like trying to sneak in and watch. Um, all right, so I, I know that, you know, plenty of people watch and, and I care who interacts. I do care to some extent who watches. Um, I didn't used to, I used to be very, anyone can watch, um, and that's still on a technical, I'm just not as comfortable with it anymore. That's still my, my permission sort of, I mean, as long as I don't have to see you, I really don't care if you look at me. Um, but if I have to see you, I care because there are people who have harmed me enough that I never, ever, ever want to see them. And I never, ever, ever want to interact with them again. There are people who have harmed me to that level and they don't get to interact. And so I don't want to do anything that revo that involves interacting anonymously because I don't want those people to be people I interact with. I would love to interact with more people in, in physical meat space socially distant, physically distanced. I would love to talk to some people, but not, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Um, I would love to be around some people. I would love to be around some people. I miss live music. I miss, um, In terms of being out and interacting, that's what I miss the most. Live music. Um, I miss... I miss being focused enough to get through a piece. So, let's go back to that. Um, I want people who want to live, to live in... Um, oh, oh, oh. Right. So, to me, this gets to, to the core. Um, but like I said at the beginning... I talk with my hands a lot. Um, I started learning a little bit of sign language, but not very much yet. Um, so this, this to me is, is, is a really big and key and important piece. And I don't even know how many parts we are in now. I got to hold and comfort the dog that my friend and I adopted when we moved into this awful house. While she died, the least painful death science and the government permit. I got to hold her and, and, and soothe her and, and let her know that everything was, that she was not going to be in pain anymore. I got to do that for my dog, but not for the man I adopted her with. That's disgusting. It's disgusting. I waited longer than I was comfortable with to kill her, to, to kill my dog, due to pressure from other people to try to find her a more suitable home. And that process was another layer of trauma. Um, because of my living and working conditions at the time, this weight meant I, subject, I subjected her to quality of life conditions that I found unacceptable. I could not do for my dog what I felt she deserved. And so it was so much pain every day for me to know 
that she had an option that was being delayed it was so awful but my Privacy. Remember, people deserve privacy. Uh, so I fell in love with a friend of my dead friend's um, during the months after his death. My my current life partner. I fell in love with um, during the months after my friend died. He was the first person I remember um, confiding in that what I had really wanted was to have died with my friend myself. Instead, I chose to suffer through several years of expending a lot of unnecessary energy, a lot of unnecessary energy, trying not to show my deceased partner's parents who attempted to use me as their emotional support animal after he died how much they disgust me. My ex-husband and I invited this friend to come live with us to get out of the, the oppressive conditions with his parents. Um, that's why he moved in with us. We, we were trying to help him get away from his parents. And so I was, I was so frustrated that they wanted to try to be such, they, they made a joke about adopting. Well, I'm, it probably was not a joke as much to them as I would like to hope, but they, they, they made a joke about adopting me. And no, no, what I wanted after he died was to never have to see them again. And that's not, and that's cruel. I mean, I get that. I get that that's cruel. I do. I really do. But they bullied, his mother collaborated with my mother to convince us to buy a house we could not afford. And then his mother came in and invaded my space and, no, okay, okay, refocus, refocus. They even tried to convince me to go to Greek counseling with them. I found my own, I found my own counselor. I did, it did take me a while because of my previous traumatic experiences with the mental health community. It did take me time to go back after he died. And, be, and because I knew that what I needed to talk about was very difficult even in quote unquote safe spaces. Um, so it was difficult. Um, but they, they tried to convince me to go to grief counseling with them. 45 minutes from my house. They did not offer to pay for gas. And I was poor. I was trying to figure out how to pay my bills. And their privileged... <clears throat> I still am so disgusted by the, by the things that they did. But they inherited his share of our still mortgaged house. Isn't that exciting? And that's why I still live here. That's why I still live here. My friend died before 30.